hello good evening guys welcome to the word uh, talk session and i hope everyone are doing good so uh, can you confirm guys am i audible or not in the chat uh at least uh at least neha or vivek can you confirm me that am i perfectly yeah. audible or not yes sir you are audible you are audible you are audible sir yes thank you guys thank you so much for the confirmation yeah when coming to today's orient talk session guys our topic is as you all know learn how to ace data science product presentations in an interview so as the top as you know the topic so that is an important one how you can express about your what what the product that you have done so conveying is an important means of explanation and from this point onwards our speaker as well as vivek will be hand, uh, taking over the session so over to you vivek thank you srinivas hello everyone good evening i hope i am audible and visible yes perfectly thank perfect. you audible and visible thank you thank you very much <clears throat> all right uh before we get into what we are going to discuss today i'd like to uh, briefly tell you about uh, the reason why we have this session uh, whenever there is an interview there is a high possibility that the interviewer will ask you about your hands on experience and they might not ask you directly they will ask you to talk about your project that in an interview happens to be the crucial element where the interviewer comes to an assessment about whether you are capable of utilizing the technologies tools and solving their problems but when it comes to addressing this question when it comes to answering this question in an interview or presenting your project many of us fail because we might not know the right process of presenting our project so to clarify those doubts and to give us more insights we have our speaker mr jayant mahara here today hi jayant good evening welcome Hello. thank you very much i'm really sorry for joining a little late <laughs> no problem i was no problem we just started right okay uh, before i hand over the session to jayant i'd like to uh, take you people through the agenda of the uh, session so jayant uh, uh, will be here and uh, um, observing three to four people present their projects when i say present their projects the students will just talk about their project jayant will then give his insights will share what are the things that you have to do and also will guide you people in how to present your project in an interview so as we all know the topic of today's talk is how to present your project in an interview so uh, we have uh, our guest our speaker uh, mr jain mahara here before i hand over the session to jain mahara and call the students to present their projects i'd like to give you a brief introduction about jain so jain mahara is a uh, data enthusiast with vast knowledge of uh, artificial intelligence is adept at analyzing data using software applications such as sas r and python jayant started his career as a data analyst and currently is working as data science lead at zscaler or zscaler right and he has worked on various technology models with respect to chatbots image attribution language models and pricing models so we are happy to have you here jayant uh, uh i'd like to uh hand over the session to you uh, give us a brief introduction and talk uh, so that once uh, we are done with that uh, the students will start uh, presenting their projects jayant over to you thank you thank you for such kind words vivek you know, that was really really nice thank you very much uh first of all thank you for having me here team and um, the, all the audience i like, see a huge number of people have shown up uh, i hope that after the session gets over you you are enlightened with some knowledge and you know you go home with a uh, lot of queries getting cleared and a uh, lot of roadblocks getting cleared so that the uh, things that are coming on your path of learning right so about myself i think vivek has put in a very you know modest and quite uh, descriptive way uh yeah it's been like while for me in the industry it's been more than 6 years now i'm working as a data science lead at the scaler right and yeah when you work in this such domain you get to experience or uh, you know technologies and domains and range which is quite vivid right ranging from banking to medical to retail and all those domains and technology wise also you have to work on various projects related to nlp or computer vision 
or you know traditional ml algorithms and now we have to be a part of a data science as that you need to know how to deploy or interact as the end product also right so all these things i've done so you know using that if uh, the today's sessions and all the walkthroughs of the project the students who have brought up like i like to add some of my views on top of it and we'll you know together learn something new uh through this session right okay well, that's all for my side let's start here. thank you thank you ma'am uh, sorry uh, thank you jent right so okay. i'd like to call our uh, first uh, student participant uh, who is going to present uh, his project let us go ahead with shobit sharma shobit are you there hello shobit hope you are doing good yeah i'm good doing good sir how are you i'm good i'm good thank you very much all right uh, so uh, jayant will guide you on how to uh, actually uh, present your project so uh, jayant over to you again thank you yeah so yeah, great uh, shobit you know welcome aboard and it's it's you know it's, it's a lot of pressure that comes to our mind when we are presenting a project right so yes, before you start i just wanted to add that in any interview that you go right the interviewer majority of the time don't look for the things are and a very you know set rules that you know this needs to be said first and then the other part and all right it's a general good practice you just give a overview of a project and then yes, you know walk them through or whatever you have done and then let them come up with few questions right so let's do the same thing right? you explain me in a brief and you go ahead and then uh, we'll interact on top of that got Okay. Sure, sure, sure. So, awesome. I'll go ahead now. So, yeah, my project was on credit risk analysis. So, it was a project for using machine learning and even using SQL and uh, Python. We, uh, we, uh, I, I did that project on a data set which had like attributes such as uh, uh, like if whether the applicant has property or not, or whether the applicant uh, has uh, how many children they have, how many family members they have. So it's like basic information about the applicants who are applying for a credit card. So in today's world, today's world banks are receiving a high uh, volume of uh, applicants uh, who are applying for credit cards. It's uh, necessary for the uh, like the banks to you know uh, know whether the whether this person or whether this applicant is uh, worthy of the worthy of giving the credit card or not. So in in that case they don't uh, get you know uh, losses in their bank. Because once they get, uh, once they give the credit card, the person will be you may be able to use the credit card in uh, some wrong ways, and uh, it might cause uh, loss to the bank. So that is what the problem is in today's scenario. So the solution to it, uh, like uh, in earlier times, we can say that uh, the uh, applicant applications of uh, applicants was was looked at on the basis of you know income and wealth they have. So whether they have uh, whether they need to be given the credit card or not, but uh, now there are many other factors that account into that uh, decision making. So this decision making make becomes a little bit diff difficult. So we can use machine learning so that we can uh, you take account of every factor that is there to uh, decide whether the applicant needs to be given the uh, credit card or not. So in this project, first uh, I was able to get the data set. So the data set included uh, the data, uh, like data about many applicants and whether they have got the uh, credit card or not. So it's like uh, uh, I had I had a data set which had uh, uh, the data about whether the credit card is given or not already. So it was like yes or no classification problem. Uh, yes for the people who are getting the credit card and no for the uh, people who are not getting the credit card. So. <clears throat> In that data set, I uh, first of all I uh, cleaned the data set. So in cleaning part, I uh, used Python for uh, doing that, uh, using the pandas and numpy library of the Python. And uh, in uh, data cleaning, I looked at the missing values and uh, you know all the values that are not syncing up with the data set. So after cleaning the data set for initial uh, an anal analyzing the initially analyzing the data set, I first imported the data set into SQL. And then I run some queries and try to look into the data set with uh, like get, get an overview of the data set. So after knowing the data set a little bit, I got to know about some insights which are very interesting. So after that, like one uh, insight that I would like to share is that uh, uh, like the pension pensioner people, the people who have retired and they, they are getting their pension now. So uh, they 
do not have any experience like uh, in the experience column like how many work experience they have uh, that information is not given because they are retired so they felt like that they, they, they need need not to give that information so that was something that uh, uh, i looked at so after uh, doing the uh, initial analysis i uh, again put the data set in uh, python and then uh, i started uh, uh, using uh, python to clean the data and you know uh, like uh, taking cert uh, certain columns into a certain scale so that we can use machine learning on that and uh, after data cleaning and data transformation and all the other steps uh, like uh, i even used eda to uh, explore the data set a little bit more uh, know ev about every column so what is the distribution of uh, every column every uh, applica applicant how it's different between male and females how it's different between people who have more experience rather than less experience how it's different between people who have a large family rather than a uh, people uh, less than people have who have small families so it's like that so after that uh, i gained some insight out of that also uh, so one of the basic uh, interesting in insights was that females were most likely to given credit cards like they were most likely to get approval from the banks rather than males so it was something that i uh, got to know about after doing the eda part of the um, data uh, data exploration and then after that, uh, uh, I went with machine learning algorithms. I started using classification mod uh, models that are there. So I used logistic regression and uh, uh, decision tree uh, classifier and random uh, tree classifier. So uh, most of them uh, gave pretty good outputs, but uh, the best output was the random forest classifier, which was around 91%. Uh, so no, sorry, not 91%, it was 89%. So the, there was a, uh, a good uh, like th that was not even overfit or underfit that was a go pretty good uh, uh, model i guess i didn't go into the hyperparameter tuning of the uh, uh, algorithm because uh, i felt like that was uh, good enough to move forward with the process sir you are mute i guess John, yeah yeah i'm really sorry <laughs> i just yeah. went it on mute so you get yeah, thank you. So, uh, you know, this was really good, like quite elaborative. And uh, the one, the, the, you know, the broader key, key takeaway that I can get out of it that uh, you have, like, you know, done the part end to end and you know the story of the, you know, breaking from the beginning to the end, right? So, there were a lot of good points in the entire presentation, right? And let's see, you know, I just want to, you know, put some breakdowns on top of each, every section of the project and, you know, how we can uh make it more uh, easy for us someone to understand but you did like you know i got the entire picture you know it's very easy for me to know what exactly what you're solving and all those things right as you started with the explanation right the why because this something connects with the the interviewer or even if you're you know presenting in a big talk show or somewhere the moment you start talking about the problem solving and all those things people do this mistake a lot of time right they start on the you know what they are doing rather than why they are doing first right so I think that was covered really good because you started with explaining why we are doing it, the actual problem, so that people can relate with the real-time problem, right? Because credit card is kind of a risky thing and banking domain or finance when it involves, people are very skeptical even in deploying models or coming up with any uh, kind of these kinds of modeling techniques or AI being enabled, right? Because the ethics also comes into picture when we are talking about sensitive issues and all those things. So it's very good to, you know, always address that and address some, you know, some uh, advanced point in terms of what kind of potential risks are being deployed and these kinds of models when we are talking in banking domain, as I mentioned, right? They go yes. with a lot of business insights rather than our data science and analysts. Like, you know, I've been there in the uh, front where you will say, okay, you know, certain parameters are really doing good, but the business constraint might not, you know, sync with that. So yeah, that is good. So just we should add some caveats as to what can be a potential roadblock, right? And then the the data source part is really important, right? Yeah. That you should always mention that where you are sourcing the data, right? That will make a big difference. Let's say if you are working for a bank, which is like the entire world, right? And you have built a model, let's say using India's data or China's data, then you cannot deploy the same model in Europe or somewhere else, right? But the data yes. quality differs. So we should always address that thing first before we dive into the EDA. Right? Yes. And I think the EDA part, you took it amazingly, you know, explaining me what all columns you have and you know what kind of unique insights that you found and 
that can help or you know come up with various uh, thought process for me to what should be my next step right depending on those insights right with the age or uh, with the gender the insights to important insights that you generated these are will be a key deciding factor for the business because they will be looking at these decision before running the model right because model is for someone like you who is in the data science right they will be dictating it as a black box and what is going inside and how much you know leverage is uh, the features are being given and what is coming out of that black box right awesome so that is good and when it comes to modeling right you know that uh, you should always start with the fundamental, like a baseline model. Let's say when we are doing classification, any model is that you sound baseline, like logistic regression, right? Those yes. are the models which uh, set the base. Like, you know, if I am building these kinds of project, I would say I started with the very raw model of logistic regression and my data, this is what X and Y numbers I gave. You know, that was really good in your presentation. You use numbers and stats that shows, and you know, people really rely on those things. You know, if you say, yeah, it was good, it was comparative that, Thus, the kind of a loose talk, right? But when you give numbers, that shows confidence, right? Baseline model, why I'm saying that is important because on top of it, when you add that your random forest or anything else, right? Support victim machine that gives a more impact, right? The moment you say a random forest works 91% and 92, that is good. But on, I'm not able to compare it with what, right? Uh, A to A comparison, A to B comparison. Yeah. So always set a baseline model and then on top of it, it shows that, you know, you have tried various, uh, maybe feature engineering and you generated more data, you know, you circle back and improved your model and all those things, right? So, yeah. And the final part, the evaluation, you know, when it comes to your uh, classification model, you, the accuracy is really good, but if you are saying accuracy is good, we should always say the data was balanced and all those uh, projected. Well, otherwise, if these are the, are the caveats that the data is not balanced or we have a lot of outliers and missing value, then we should always focus on more specific uh, metrics like you know either precision or a recall those case because business wise banking wise i can have both the use cases right i can be targeting at people who are good then good means what good means are they generating more revenue for me and for that they need to deploy I mean, not something that i'm encouraging i'm just saying you right and yeah. on the other hand safe pay, safe customers right safe customers in the sense who are paying on time so both these problem statements are different right so if i say accuracy that gives a like a mixed signal but if i'm talking about these two topics separately yeah one position precision can be a good factor and some other way you know recall so in classification always specific metrics that shows yeah you have done your evaluation perfectly right? yes. but other than that you know your end-to-end -end journey was really awesome you know, i got the entire picture you didn't have to ask you any question you really explain me everything really nice right okay perfect thank you thank you so much okay. thank you thank you jayant uh, thank you shobit so that was a pretty uh, insightful in uh, i mean those uh, guidelines those uh, insights were really useful i think all the students can make a note of those and follow them when you go to present your projects in the next interview all right uh, next candidate uh, who is going to present the project is uh, shiva subramanian uh, shiva could you please uh, switch on your camera please uh, yes sure yes yes yeah, Shiva, go ahead and present your project. Jayant will listen to you and uh, give you some insights and guidelines. Uh, first of all, thank you for the opportunity. And uh, I would like to so in this project, I have uh, I have done one project named uh, Austrian Portal. Shiva, Shiva, I'm Shiva, sorry to interrupt, Shiva. Uh, could you, uh, yeah, could you please hold the mic a bit closer to your yeah. mouth? Yes. Can you speak once? Let's check if it's working properly. Uh, now can you hear me yes yes it's absolutely good yes please yes. go ahead uh so yeah uh so my project is about uh, airbnb hotel booking prediction so since it is a hotel booking prediction the target variable is of uh, continuous values so i have first i have uh, gone, uh, collected the data set why this for pro i have took this problem is because uh, airbnb's uh, hotel booking app like in india like how we are having OYO and uh, make my trips like that and all it is uh, Airbnb is on hotel booking prediction. So main reason is uh, in Airbnb there were many branches of Airbnb either in US or India or uh, Australia any kind of uh, country we can take. Airbnb is working on the each and every the franchises all over the world and uh, their only concern is they need to know how uh, each and every country uh, their uh, product is moving on like in airbnb there will be many uh, uh you know uh, hotels may be registered or any uh, reservations like any hotels may be registered 
so they need to know like uh, in each and every country how their franchise is working so like uh, Uh, they are, they will be taking many factors like uh, how many hotels are there in a particular country and how it is working and like uh, what type of uh, hotels uh, customers are uh, really uh, moving on like uh, how the product they are using like that they need to know and also how the prices of prices of each and every hotels are uh, going in airbnb like that so these data say uh, they need the uh, airbnb ceo needs from each and every country so uh the, i took that as a uh, data set so i got the data set from the uh, internet so i worked on the data set so that here the target variable is of uh, price of each and every hotel registered in the airbnb so what will be the uh, prices in the real time like in future how will be the prices of each and every hotel registered in the airbnb so uh for that i have took the data set from the net and uh, i started working on the data set so first uh, i Uh, imported the data set and put it in the mysql workbench and got some good in, insights there i have got uh, insight like uh, in one particular hotel the, the customers or vip customers of the particular hotel uh, are what to say they are uh, most likely going for a uh, lower class uh, hotels in the particular airbnb so that i got uh, in one of the insights in the sql then i move into the uh, python and i have imported the data set and first i have gone through some basic exploration like uh, what are the columns and what are the uh, first five rows keeping of the first five rows and uh, and also like what are the data types holding in there like that i have just gone through the basics of uh, uh, data set then i have gone through the exploratory data analysis which is nothing but eda there i have checked uh, how many missing values are present and uh, how the data is normally distributed or whether the data is having any skewness uh, something like that and uh, after the exploration and doing some transformations i have implemented uh, i have done some feature scaling as well i have used standard scalar for uh, since all the independent variables i got as a uh, numerical values so i have gone to standard scalar feature selection and uh, i went move on to the model implementation there i have used since uh, the target variable is of continuous variable i have used the regression model so there i have used uh, two regressions logistic regression and linear regression so here there are many independent variables say for an example uh, i can see reviews ratings of the particular hotel and there are like uh, there are many what are the ratings like uh, for the past one year how are the ratings of a particular hotel like that there are so many criteria so location of each and every hotel uh, like its latitude and longitude so all the independent variables are there since we it, the prices of the hotels prices of each and every hotel is not depend only on one feature it is dependent on multiple features so i have took all the features as a uh, importance and uh, handle all the features as well then after that uh, i implement a linear regression model and uh, gone through some and i have got some uh, insights of it using the linear regression and for since the model first it's not uh, behaving properly like it gives uh, some around uh, prices of each and every hotel got some uh, like more than $2000 something like that so i went on to the hyperparameter tuning like uh, because it rely more on training data so it causes some overfitting issues so i gone through the method of uh, regression lasso regression i have used that uh, model i use that hyperparameter mo- uh, method and i have got the result as around uh, instead of 200 or 300 i have got some 600 or 700 dollars it, it has been reduced to some extent and for logistic reg- and also i have evaluated the performance of the model using msc that, that is nothing but a mean squared error and mean absolute error and a root mean squared error so in both linear and logistic regression the model is performed well but on the performance evaluation metrics uh, for logistic regression uh, r squared value has gave me a good prediction whereas in linear regression uh, root mean squared error has given me a good prediction so this is how would my implemented the project All right, got it, got it. Thank you. Thank you for the walk through, Shiva. That was really good. Right. Uh, so, you know, you have picked a topic that will excite every person who's going to interview or you know, going to interact with you. They will ask you a lot of questions because it's a very interesting topic even whenever price get involved, right? So people, even if they are working on a different project, they can relate with it because majority of the companies look for a pricing model, right? 
not only your airbnb but uh, the housing pricing or the you know movie price or product prices everywhere you see people are you know are fine with the pricing distribution models right and that plays a really big role in the revenue generation right so anyone who's going to start their ml journey will definitely target the pricing industry first so that they can come up with a method or an algorithm that helps them with the these pricing model accordingly you know dynamically if the parameters are changing i can you know reduce or increase the price of various things right so they will take this thing to a very generic level right and then you have to answer with everything that you have on your plate what you have done and the generic questions that comes into picture right so whenever you know regression models comes in and especially with the pricing part uh the insight part becomes really important this is where the majority of the time will be spent because as you also use uh, standard scaling and all those operations right you saw the skewness in the data and you observe various relationship between the columns and the number of columns also were quite uh, significantly high on the higher scale right not i'm saying enormously high but somewhat there right so the moment you address these things lot of questions comes into mind in terms of regression specifically right are we yeah, looking at the basic statistical norms which certify the condition right not going too much on to tech that on but yeah, you know those questions will come into picture whether you know you are uh, making sure the relationship correlations is are not there statistically is not there or a variance is maintained or not you know noise is there or not those questions will come into picture right so we should be prepared with that on top of it when you are saying scalar you know you are standardizing the data then some questions come then why not any other kind of scaling right why only standard scaling why not min max or logarithmic scaling those questions come into picture there is no right or wrong answer here it's just you know we have to say yeah we have explored these things and you should have done. also do that try one or two different uh, standardizing techniques and accordingly see the results right because the data sets are you know, dynamic these days if it is working for one condition that doesn't mean that becomes an ideal standardization technique and everywhere that technique will work right so those kinds of things like yeah if there are multiple ways to solve something you should always explore those things right but yeah standard scalar is generally quite popular and people generally get very really good results with that so that is a good approach right? and then uh, if we address an issue of outlier missing value or skewness then we have to make sure how we deal with it right if an issue has been raised then what are we doing to solve it right and then when it comes to modeling that is really good right linear regression is something we should start with to observe the results and once the you know readings you get with the r square or the adjusted r square or the msc that you are observing in this way right comes into picture then we are we start building other models right but generally when you are working on a regression model just stick to more models which are you know uh, well curated for regression right so maybe after linear regression let's say we have models like you know uh, knm can also be used as a regression model if you have used decision tree also as a regression model or support vector machine or some other model right because logistic regression is primarily being used for classification you know i you may be using the probabilistic output to get the range of the prices right or you know get a confidence interval on top of it but still it's on the gray area to use the logistic regression in a regression world right so you should always stick to models which are either linear regression and all other models which sync or you know are more useful when it comes to regression in particular right and when the moment you said regional lasso you know, that is really good and you know, that shows that you have explored the uh, curse of dimensionality right because you were not able to get good accuracy so you want to try models which do hyperparameter tuning in the background in the sense like they add an additional parameter like right? which controls or you know penalizes certain columns or give more leverage to certain columns depending on the logic either you are using ridge or lasso to make sure there is less noise in the data less you know uh, not Uh, sufficient variance is there the columns that you are using are is you know contributing enough to get a good output and that's the reason people use those things as a dimension reduction also or as a main model also right and especially in regression right your evaluation will be a very crucial part right because if i say my msc is 500 right so it's quite a big number we have to compare it with three different models you know i say have i have five models and then model 1 was you know 500 and then i reduce is like brought it down to 100 something like that so that is something will give more confidence to the person okay yeah you know you do have improved your model and then generally in regression we try to focus on an r square or the adjusted r square value more over these other metrics because they show that your model is able to capture the enough information of the data that you have right the higher the r square value the better uh, variance you have captured in the data right so these are the key highlights you know that 
as I, again i said right you explained it so beautifully well that i got everything but the question that i'm asking will can come from the other side right so they should be prepared from all these angles right awesome otherwise you did a great job right thank, thank you, you very much thank you, thank you. Uh, very good shiva thank you jen for all the uh, inputs uh, i hope these will add to whatever we uh, got from the previous presentation as well uh, next we have faizan ahmed uh, faizan could you please switch on your camera mic and start uh, presenting your project hello everyone uh, so my name is faizan ahmed khan and uh, i have prepared a uh, power bi presentation on a data set known as superstore this is sales, it is a uh, this dashboard is based on sales analysis so uh, given by audience school only and so it had several questions that needed to be answered so as per the rules i had to clean the data set and in the power query and load it into the bi and then i have to find out the total sales which came out as 233 million and uh, as uh, they were a discount available on certain uh, products such as uh, which varied from 10% to 80% and there are several products which were offered at no discount to categorize them uh, based on their rate then uh, i had to like i categorized the sales in sale value as per the cart six as uh, there are certain uh, sales which exceeded the exceeded the amount of 10% so i i i categorize them at as high 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 cut and then there are cut values ranging from 30, 500 to 10000 uh, they were as high high cut and there and the cut value and the product and the sales which had cut values from 1000 1500 they were as medium cut the those sales which were below 1000 they were termed as low cut Mm. I had to show all, I did all of them. Uh, then I, uh, I had to show the based on their delivery, uh, based on the days of delivery. So there were basically four categories. Uh, one is standard class, which the products which took five days to deliver, they were in the standard class. In second class, the products which took around three days to deliver, they were in the second class category. Plus, and then there, there was first class category. Uh, which mainly comprised of the objects, uh, product, products, uh, which took like uh, two days to deliver. There, there was a category known as uh, same day, like uh, products that were delivered more same day. Then uh, I created a dashboard report on it, uh, which included the KPIs showing total sales, discounted sales, uh, and low card sales. Also, I uh, applied, I created a pie chart visual and uh, showing the cart, uh, showing the sales as per the cart values that was like low, medium, high, and very high. And uh, uh, bar chart report showing the average delivery days, mainly considering like uh, the four categories standard, class, second class, first class, and on Sunday. I also showed a map filter uh, showing the different states having the like amount of sales and uh, also one area a line chart showing the amount of sale uh, of the department as per the year awesome you got the picture right thanks for that uh you know this comes as an you know very wonderful topic when it comes to the sales patterns right the, the, whenever you're talking about a retail data which comes with a lot of variables in terms of your discounts pricing time of the day and the analysis that you have done right so this will interest a lot of people who are in the ba or a da you know business analyst or a data analyst role that rely on these kinds of insights on a daily basis to drive their business decisions right not only that, uh, the byproducts of these analysis are really important when it comes to campaigns, right? Because all these insights only gonna help the person to dis take decision on the basis of what kind of different campaigns or promotions or plans and scheme one company can come up, depending on the, the things that have been done in the past, right? So when you say 
uh, you know, you started analyzing and you saw the, the first thing that you captured about the discount part, right? Uh, with respect to discount, how the variables are behaving or basically how the items are behaving. So here, a lot of people will be interested in knowing that, uh, you know, with respect to the customer's demographics and customer's perspective, do we have those kinds of data available as to what kind of people are coming, right? Because these insights will be more helpful if I look at it from a customer's angle also, right? So sales data is really good to come up with campaigns idea. But if you are working, you know, this can lead to a recommendation angle also. So that perspective, a lot of people can ask you, do we have a customer angle from this, right? If you are saying a lot of people are using promo, so what are those people, you know, do we have those kinds of association available or not, right? Just ask, letting you know what kind of questions can come. So you should be prepared in that term, right? And then when we say promotions are driving my sale, then we should give a cycle uh, kind of a prediction. Like, you know, when the product life cycle start, you know, it's the beginning, what should be the price, uh, whether the promotion was from the beginning or the middle part or in the end, or do we are we changing the promotion down the line or not, right? Then interesting questions come, people who are in the retail, they might ask you, you know, how these sales patterns are they on the basis of your weekday or weekend analysis, those kinds of things are available. So accordingly, I can come up with more ideas. Or on the basis of a day split, right? Maybe in the morning, noon, afternoon, or during the night, right? What kind of age group, as I mentioned, uh, human or like the customer segment analysis, those stories and what analysis you have done together will give you a really good uh, insight. Because the idea here, if I'm taking any data, I'm running or you know generating charts on any kind of a dashboarding tool, right? Name it Tableau or anything else, uh, Superset or anything. The main idea is once I see these numbers or these charts on a daily basis or the Upper management looks at it, but they should be able to do with these numbers, right? They should be able to connect that dot over there. So if I'm telling that I have done this analysis, then next step would be okay, what uh, decisions it can help you uh, take when you see this line chart or this pie chart, right? If I'm telling that on the basis of, you know, uh, maybe area wise segment you have done, right? So the moment someone sees that, they can see, okay, the last seven days or last one month, exactly be specific about what uh, number or duration that you're picking, uh, you know, how the sales are going up and down. So anything is alarming. So the person can easily identify looking at a chart, right? That, yeah, you know, something is off in this particular region in the 11 days, either the sales are overshooting or the sales are become completely wrong. Then they will ask question, okay, then, then what? Is the sales have become less? Is the reason inventory? Is the reason promotions? Is the reason competition? Do we have these kinds of data or not? I mean, it's not mandatory. You should have these data. I'm just saying like these kinds of questions can come and we should be prepared, you know? Okay, yeah, now I can see the sales is less. Now what? Right, if I'm telling someone the sales is less, the next question is, like in, then what is your story about it, right? The first thing, why the sales is less? And the next question, uh, answer from your side would be how you are planning to cope up with it, right? So in the uh, data analysis kinds of presentations, the more stories that you can generate, the more, uh, you know, inferences or the pointers you can connect and the solutions if you can able to give, uh, or you can even come up with unique solution, right? You mentioned that, you know, you never encountered this thing, but there are few ideas which are coming to the top of my mind. And these ideas are like blah, 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 like right? these three things I can do. Okay. First thing I should, let's say, let's take a simple example. You saw a particular state sales are going down. What is happening? You know, the inventory management is, you know, not properly working. Some items which are on a high sale are not being delivered. There could be one reason, right? Or a competitor has opened another, uh, you know, there is any vicinity or a competitor exists or some other problems are there. So then you know the why, and then what are the solutions, right? If the inventory is the problem, you know, are we planning to change the inventory management system? Are we planning to uh, divert the resources properly or not? And in terms of competition, what is the, you know, the competition revenue generation chart? What are the uh, campaigns that they are running, which might overpowering you, right? So like the why and how you can combat those solutions. So if you go prepared, or even if you're not prepared, if you come up with unique ideas during the interaction or presentation, right? This will add a, you know, sparkling point to your profile at at that point, right? Because people will know, yeah, you are a proactive thinker, right? Even if something doesn't exist, if I'm generating a fabricated data for you on the spot, you can come up with unique ideas like that, right? So this will give you an extra, extra edge when we are going for our data analysis or business analyst, basically dashboarding kind of, you know, where you are analyzing your data story. So, yeah. So I hope that that's useful, right? On top of that, the presentation is good, right? Yes, sir. Wonderful, Jayant. Uh, those inputs were uh, really valuable. Uh, now, uh, if you have any inputs that you would like to share apart from the presentation given by the students, you can share those and then we will open for the questions from the students and we can start answering those. Awesome. Okay. Uh, 
uh, you know, I, I believe this, this was really good by all the students, right? Uh, because, you know, doing work is really, is the fundamental part of any role you are applying for, like analysis, science or anything. But able to portray your uh, work through a story, you know, that is really challenging, right? It's easy from a, a listening point of view, from my point of view, I mean, you know, it's very easy. I just have to listen to you. But you being there, you know, it's really challenging for a person to explain the other party that, you know, you, you have done this, why you have done this, how you have done this, how you are improving your team and what are the next steps, right? So that requires a lot of courage. And that is something, you know, people should start investing more time on because, you know, I know like a lot of people work, they work on 10, 20 projects. And, but when it comes to explaining that, right, that is where the, the bridge is broken, right? So that is also one skill that you should, along with your technical skill, everyone should, you know, refine. On top of that, you know, the key things are good points that I captured in all the three uh, presentations that we have was like the entire storyline, right? You know, starting from like zero and ending it at the nth position that that was followed properly. And this is good, right? Because if you are here and there, right, you're uh, explaining things randomly, like you started from some angle and then taking you directly to final and then coming back. This creates a lot of confusion. So we should always follow a structured path. If you are, you know, helping us someone understand what is the story you are telling, right? So other than that, yeah. The key things I think we already discussed with individual to classification problem or a regression problem or even data analysis, like, you know, these three were uniquely apart and they hold their own environment in, in the self and require their own analysis on their own front, right? So I think the points that we discussed for each of them, they still hold and on top of that, uh, the things that I added, right? Like the proper story structure should be there and try to give more presentations like this, like, you know, whenever you're getting an opportunity, talk to your friend, ask them to, you know, ask you questions because when we do write a code when we you know we do some project we feel like it is really good right from our angle it's very difficult to find loopholes or shortcomings or room for improvement areas right because we are doing it and our brain assumes that you know we are what we are doing is always the best so always be open for criticism ask your friends your seniors or colleagues you know to evaluate your product have mock discussions like that because when you are explaining to someone right even today I do this before going for a big talk. Like if I explain it to some of my friends, you know, I uh, get some points in my mind. Okay, you know what? I missed that or I should have, uh, you know, changed the certain points to a different angle because you know, I have already gone through it. I now I can refine it. So yeah, do those expect. And other than that, I think this is a wonderful session by all three of them. So really good. Thank you, Jant. Uh, so now we'll take the questions. I'll moderate the process. I'll read out the questions. You can also see them in the chat. But I'll read them out for you, then uh, kindly answer those questions, please. Okay, awesome. Oh, yeah, thank you. So first question I see here uh, is how could we use a logistic regression? Since logistic is used for classification problem and price here would be part of linear regression. That's a very good question. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good question. I think I addressed it while presenting it also it's 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 in a very gray area right we should not use that classification model should not be used when it comes to regression that's absolutely right uh primarily it should be used uh for logistic regression specifically should be used for classification only when we are trying to take a decision of yes or no right like those kinds of places it will work really fine the math behind it is gonna really give you good results so yes we should not not be using that for a regression right that's the one main answer for it you know. thank you uh, then the next question is about uh, uh, how much time we should take to explain the project and points needed to be considered while explaining in nutshell. Uh, so this is about uh, time related. No, I, I get you. And this is a really, really good question. Like whoever asked this is a really uh, you know, smart question because that's, you know, that depends on a lot of factors. I'll give you a simple scenario. Let's say it depends on interaction to interaction, right? Sometimes you are giving an interview to a person uh with the entire journey you know the hr might have explained you that you will be going through a technical round where you have to explain your projects few questions and then a summary right so these kinds of interview like one or two hour session where you need to be very precise right you cannot walk through the entire interview cannot be used for explaining your project so there where you have to be very specific to one or two line or maximum three line okay yeah i'm working on a uh, insurance uh, claim and industry my objective was a lot of fraudulent claims were happening. So my model is going to help business uh, solve the fraudulent case. Simple three line answer. But on the other hand, some companies take six to four rounds or three to four rounds. And there they have a entire dedicated interview for your project walkthrough. This is where you can go into depth, explain them in the entire history. You know, why you came up with this idea? What was the scenario that brought you, you to this situation? 
and how much you know where you are getting the data how you are planning to solve it uh how much impact the business impact give numbers you know if, if we solve this thing we can save this much money or we can save this much fraudulent crime give statistical numbers on those cases so depending on the situation we have to be very precise or be more uh exhaustive right and sometimes let it be dynamic if some other person you know shows interest and they ask you then uh even if a short interview if the person says you know can you explain me more in depth yeah then you can go ahead and explain so i would say it depends dynamically depends on the uh, situation you are wonderful jay okay one of our uh, presenters shobit has a few questions shobit could you unmute yourself and ask hello yeah sure, sure. am i audible yes 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 you are yes so so my first question is like is a story and explanation enough or uh, like a visual is required so let's say the proof of work that we say like you know the like uh, if we have made a machine learning project so is it uh, okay like is it enough to tell about the explanation only or uh, do we need to build an web app or something that the recruiter can also see like yeah this is working or this is ha- this has worked for him so is this yep. enough or yeah i get i get the question you know this is again comes back to your storytelling skills right i would say uh, most of the time these discussions that you going to have are one on one right uh, they are very compact and pretty decisive right in the sense that the person who's going there to evaluate they have certain things in their mind how they want to do that right and generally all the good platforms they will walk you through this before going ahead right so you should definitely add a platform or you know resume or you should highlight this point that you have a working model ready so that you can demo it but going blindly and showing the demo can take the discussion here and there because that is again not a very structured discussion right because if i am taking your interview i want to know okay yeah you are here for a data science profile i ask you a question that okay if you have worked on a project if you have worked on five projects select the best project and go ahead and explain me right so why what i mean by that you walk me through the project in a gist first and then i'll ask you okay you know what okay i this is good uh, explain me this module in more depth explain me that module in more depth when it comes to deployment you know your what you are talking is more focus on the deployment part which is really good and that's why i started the session also right if you remember i mentioned that now data scientists are more much required into know how to deploy these things also so if you that time if someone is talking about those aspects that if you have built the model what will you do next yeah then you can mention that you know as i already stated that uh, i have a working model ready if you want i can show you a live version also otherwise this model does this and that right and i use this technology i use you know you are a aws to deploy this thing or i build a local app or a local website where i hosted it and this is how the interface looks if you want i can show you a live demo else you can just explain what the tool does and how user friendly it is right again yes. start with the concise answer and depending on the conversation where it is going yeah take it there yes sir. so i uh one more thing to uh, this like is this expected from like the freshers to you know deploying the projects or something oh, no it's not like you know from the fresher perspective it depends on the profile that you are applying for right okay. if the position is uh for the ml ops operation kind of a field where the requirement is that then it's not that mandatory for you to show the you know, live demo but even if someone like if i'm, I'm recruiting like to be honest if i see the interest and know that you hold the knowledge right and it is if i'm interviewing for an intern intern or a fresher you know i'm not expecting someone to on day one to deploy this on a big scale and show me a working model that logically doesn't make sense even yeah for an experienced person also we give leverages right you know okay yeah, if you know that knowledge let's say some technology has come one year ago right then there is no logic in me asking that you know can you do this or not right it just came like yes. two months back and how can i expect that even from fresher interns or even from the experienced folks also right but like your interest that is what captures everybody's eyes right whether you have invested some time to learn that skill or you have idea about it right how it's done that means you can do it right and it's not that what you have done it's people generally recruit you on the basis of what you can do right your own potential so okay. that is not you know mandatory thing if you have done it's good even if you have not done you know uh, seen people getting recruited who have not done hands on but they have the knowledge and the capacity and they have proven themselves down the line right okay sir so uh, just one more question sir how yes. many projects are enough so like i have a habit of making project on you know everything that i learn so i have already six projects in my resume that i can uh, show show to the recruiter and i even find it myself overwhelming when i end up talking about 
you know, uh, telling about six, but when I end up talking about two projects only that are on machine learning or, you know, some uh, somewhat Im important projects. So right. how many projects are enough? That's my question. There, there's no such thing called enough. <laughs> right? You can okay. work on as many projects, then, but the discussion should be more focused on what you are applying for. Right? Let's say if you're work, applying for a medical company or a startup, right? And if you have all the 10, 20 projects on retail, so they will not yeah. be able to, you know, uh, get on sync with that, right? So even if you yeah. have one medical to talk about that, that's going to be suffice, right? So there's no upper limit, but yeah, you should always be ready with one minimum one or two, which if someone asks you, you should know that project inside out. That is it. And there's no such thing upper limit. You can learn as much, you know, the more practice you will get, the more confidence you will get, right? Maybe let's say in the first stage, uh, when you're doing classification, right? You forgot about how to, you know, even take care of, you know, just randomly dropping categorically. You were not even handling them. Hypothetically, say, right? next yes. time when you build, you rate somewhere that, you know, I could have tribe label encoder, well, hot encoder, those things. And next time you learn something else. So there's no upper limit. You can work as many projects you will do. Every time you will learn something new, right? So I cannot cap this with saying that, okay, five is enough, then stop. Right? That means I'm saying you to stop learning, right? That is all. Yeah. So you can definitely do as many things, but yeah, be confident with at least one or two. Which you know inside out that that will be my you know key point in this question okay sir okay that that's very helpful sir. thank you so much good good Shabit. right uh and from the questions uh by other students next question is uh, uh would you recommend some ai tools to be learned for the field of data science is the next question in terms of tools, right, they uh, I do know that there are a lot of tools and even some dashboarding tools, like, you know, they have also started leveraging the power of AI and you don't need to have to code and all. But again, that depends on what kind of profile you're looking for, right? There are various kinds of jobs where you have to do hands-on, you need to know, or you need to be very comfortable with the coding part, right? Over there, they'll be looking at your analytical and coding problem skills. And then there are companies who rely heavily on tools, right? There are tools like K9, even Tableau has the potential to build basic models. SPSS is there. Right? And then there are companies, right? Uh, some companies like Data IQ and all those things. There they have tools where minimum coding is required, and majority of the things works on your knowledge and your skills and how you handle the story pipeline altogether, right? Your overall knowledge of data science rather than doing your hands on. So it's good to have some knowledge about the tool, but it depends again, right? Where are you targeting? Which companies you are targeting, what kind of portfolio you're looking for. If you are, you know, very new to tech industry and you feel very challenged with respect to code, there's no harm. There are so many tools, leverage any one tool and apply to those companies which are, you know, already have these tools on board because these are commercial. So they are like, you know, very expensive. So not expecting from a very, you know, new company or company which does not have a tool and you know this skill. So there is a really highly unlikely chance that they also get that tool on board, right? So if you're good with coding, yeah, go ahead and, you know, start writing these things from scratch. You can practice in Python, Google Collab, and those three versions are available. On top of it, yeah, if you feel that, you know, right now you are not very comfortable with coding and you're new to tech uh, environment, there's no harm because you have the storytelling skill, you have the domain knowledge, right? You know how the uh, things are required, you know the entire pipeline, you know scaling and all. It's just you can't code it, but you know, right, how to do scaling, you know how to do outlier treatment. So for that, we have tools like K9M and all those tablets. Any one, if you leverage, all others are more or less safe, right? To be very honest, the UI is a little bit different here and there. If you can master one, you can do on any project that you come, comes your way. That's it. Okay, Jay. Next, uh, where will we use linear regression in uh, uh, real time? So linear regression, right? Again, as we were discussing the pricing models, is like heavily used linear regression, right? Where you are trying to come up with the engine that tells you exactly what dynamic prices, let's say housing industry is booming, right? In certain cities or country, let's say Middle East or in India, the, uh, you know, metropolitan prices are going up and down. So then you need to have a model which can take in the variable uh, for depending on the area that you live in, the schools or hospitals around, Depending on that, what should be the price currently, right? That will give you the most revenue. So this is where one of the biggest application of your linear regression, right? On top of it, you can have uh, uh, in banking domain, you can decide, right? How much uh, for profit generation next quarter I can expect given these campaigns were run, given these promotions were run, given these customers getting on board, how much of money that I can be used for different, different plans, right? Because banks won't take the money. They, you know, uh, split that into different parts. 
so that number is again a continuous output then medical we get uh, now a lot of testing the so medical tests are going online right uh, ml are being introduced over there base models are being run given these parameters what is the acceptable range of certain kind of a behavior right so yeah the applications are numerous right? medical whether it's retail or whether it's banking anywhere you can use this regression wherever the output is a continuous number you can use a regression model basically sure, thank you jayant Okay, there is uh, a question which is combination of two questions. I'd like to combine and ask that. Uh, how can we add storytelling with presentation is the first part. And what are the important points we need to mention during presenting our projects? So storytelling during presentation, right, it comes naturally. It's not an additional add-on or a kind of a thing that you have to add. Storytelling basically means the connecting the dots, right? If someone is listening to you, they should be able to connect, you know, understand the flow, right? Let's say I'll give you a very simple example of classification model. Let's say, right? If you are telling, okay, this was my problem statement, and then directly you are jumping to, you know, I ran five models. This was the best model, and then you are letting the other person, you know, guess, okay, the entire EDA, you know, what you did. They are asking you, uh, you know, you have to ask that externally, right? Or if you are saying that my model did really good, third model did really good. Now, on the basis of what I'm saying, this statement, the third model did really good, right? So I'm not able to connect these dots. So this is what people, majority of the people lack because they have done the entire work and they're presenting it and they're giving the right stats, but they're not connecting the dots. So storytelling basically means if I'm starting from zero, my flow should be like that. The other person is keeps on engaging. You know, they are interested over there and they can see the every statement that you make connects with the previous statement. Okay, I saw the skewness in the data set. Then I did logarithmic transformation, try to come back the skewness, right? I saw the, there were so many variables for me to build any model. So I tried uh, dimension reduction, right? So these kinds of uh, pointers, if you make sure like, no, that's why I said, give a demo mock to your friends and then you will realize, okay, you know what? I should have said this between these two statements so that the person understands. The less the person needs to ask questions, the more comfortable they will be. And that's the point I also mentioned, right? When I was uh, listening to the presentation, that I have to ask minimum questions because the students were able to connect the dots. So just make sure that is happening and then the storytelling skills are generally unique to everyone else. Right? There's no set rules in it that will come naturally. Last question before we uh, close the session. Uh, looking at the current industry trends, what kind of projects do you suggest? Uh, that's that's a very open-ended question. We'll be very honest with you guys because you know there's no one thing that you should be looking at. Like if I talk about myself, right? Let me give you an answer from my perspective. So I'm not an you know expert in one particular domain. I have mastered like trying to master, you know, let me correct that statement, trying to master data science from a perspective where I can deploy it anywhere, right? So tomorrow if someone comes from medical, I can help them with that. If someone comes with retail, I can help with that, right? So that's a goal that you have should have in your mind, right? So what I'm saying that, let's say you have not mastered any particular domain, then you should be knowing your models properly. If I know logistic regression inside out, I can implement it anywhere, right? So any project, pick any project that can implement classification, so learn the art of classification, right? On the other hand, then there are people who are in the industry for, let's say, a lot of time, right? So for them, it's very difficult to keep on changing their domain, right? Let's say you are in the industry 15 years in the retail part, then all of a sudden asking you to work in a medical could be quite challenging, right? So what you can leverage is then you for you you should start focusing on projects which are directly linked with the uh, uh, you know retail industry you know which is the trending like price optimization engines or inventory management instance and all these things the pricing model or recommendation engines right specifically targeting your domain so again this uh, you know that's why i said it's an open-ended question because it be very specific to the person who's asking right so if you are fresher and you know you have no much knowledge about various how the domain works you know various domains work and you are open to learning anything then you can put any any problem statement then don't focus on the problem statement that much rather than know what is happening inside the models that you are running and if you are doing certain kinds of feature engineering why you are doing those feature engineering right learn that art so that you can implement that art anywhere you want and the other hand second type of people who have mastered their technology sorry their domain you can cherry pick the models or projects right you know let's say Everybody is talking about recommendation these days, right? Netflix and all, Amazon. Everybody needs people who are good in recommendation. Oh, last week you were so So you can pick that domain and start with learning basic recommendation engines first, and then eventually you will grow your uh, knowledge in that. Right? So that would be my take on that question. Wonderful, wonderful, nice, Jan. Okay. 
Okay, uh, we are almost uh, at the end of the session. It is uh, 7.45 and there are many questions to be answered. Uh, we will uh, answer your questions. Please write your questions to success at odinschool.com. All your questions will be answered. All right. Uh, Jayant, uh, thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much for sharing wonderful insights on how to present projects in an interview. The terms, the aspects, the knowledge, the insights, the idea that you have given to our students uh, is really exceptional. And I hope this will help them crack interviews when they really go and present their presentation and uh, uh, sit for an interview. Uh, it was wonderful having you here for the second time, uh, Jayant. I hope we'll have more of such interactions. I hope you will come and guide our students in the uh, same way. Uh, thank you very much, Jayant. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, people. Uh, so as I told you, all your questions will be answered. Please write your questions to success at odinschool.com. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you very much for actively asking questions. I hope this session gave you some insights on how to deal with the complex and complicated situation of presenting your project in an interview. Happy learning. We'll meet next week. Thank you all. Srinivas, over to you. Yes. Uh, thank you, Vivek. And thank you, Jain, for all the insights and all. So guys, so I have one more request is that so please don't forget to give the feedback. Okay. So that's the only means I keep on telling you. So feedback is the only means where you can convey how you enjoyed the session. Okay. So with you giving the feedback appropriately, then only you'll be having the encouragement and everything to conduct more sessions that will help you in the future as well. Okay. So don't forget to give the feedback. And when you're giving the feedback, please do mention what are the aspects that you have liked. And as you all know, 10 and 9 is considered as satisfactory feedback. Yeah, with this, guys, we are concluding the session. And if you do have anything to ask, like Vivek said, so you can write a mail to the success at the school.com to the support team. They will be addressed. So, yeah. So, thank you. Guys. Uh, also, student, you can uh, post on any forum or like your LMS if you have any questions and the questions which were not answered here. Well, uh, we are very happy to answer them all. And thank you so much, Jayant. Uh, it's the second time you're coming and uh, answering all the questions and all the, making the sessions very insightful. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for having me.